All right, folks, this is just a very quick update. Um, as you can see, I just got my block here with the, um, with the fletching jig. Here's a quick update to the clicker, how I mounted it before. So this is the clicker blade. Um, and if you've watched my clicker video, um, you know that this is just a piece of um, rather narrow, I'd say like half an inch wide measuring tape. So the way we did it before works quite well for me, but um, I wanted to use a little bit thicker cord. In this case, it's just really um, the classic D-loop material that is not cheap, but it doesn't have any stretch and it has a really, really good longevity um, and they come in really cool colors. So the way I wanted to mount it here, if you ever had a clicker by, um, you know, um, Cricut or clickety or whatever, um, it usually comes with a little metal ferrule. So when you're using the D-loop material, the cool thing about it is that you can just um, get this um, little metal ferrule off and you clamp it around this and it actually protects your cord from the very sharp edges of this type of material. Um, now, making it yourself, I haven't really come up with anything. So what I'm trying to do today here is um, I want to mount this through a hole in here that I'm going to make in a second and then I have to protect this from getting cut by the sharp edges of this very thin steel material um, in order for not to just lose it. The rest is um, pretty much the same. One thing that I've gone to is um, I am using this very thick and hard felt underneath my um, clicker on my bow limb. So this is one thing that, that has changed. Um, I used to just mount it with some Velcro directly to the limb and it works as well, but I think I'm um, having a little bit of a platform, so to say, um, is a good idea and this stuff holds up very well. I mean, after all, this is supposed to go on chair legs and get dragged and torqued around a lot. So the, the material is good and uh, the glue on it is pretty good too. So we're starting out by just um, going ahead down here, I round this off with a, a pair of scissors. Um, it, definitely not the greatest thing for your scissors to um, to be cutting this kind of material but I dedicated one pair to this kind of stuff so using a little tack nail here as you can see um, and I'm just trying to match it as good as possible to um, my D-loop material here let's just go ahead and make a hole here pretty straightforward I'm just using this this wooden rest here um, going about half an inch up from the bottom there you go I went through just marked it and now I'm just gonna give it one good whack to go through, go through here there you go wiggle a little bit now this hole might not be big enough might require a different nail I just didn't want to go too big because anything we're bigger or like far bigger than our cord we have to come up um, with a much bigger I'm mushrooming in the back in order to um, keep it in there. Let's see if it fits or not. It can be a pretty tight fit, doesn't really matter. Okay, we've, we're through. So the way we mount this, um, and after we're mounting the, um, the cord here, we're pretty much ready to, to go ahead doing all the other steps the same way as in the clicker video. Um, usually with this D-loop material, that's not really cheap. Um, I don't know why, but it's not cheap. It's when you buy it online. There's a lot of other cords you can use. Um, I used Bankline. It's just not as um, long living, what I showed in the other video, but it was more of a whatever you have in your household type of video that was really important for me. So people can just go um, through a couple of draws and get all kind of stuff going that they have already um, to make a clicker that very same day. Um, picking up some of this D-loop material I find good because um, like I said, there is no stretch in it, lots of longevity, and another reason is that it's quite stiff. So with the thinner material, it might wrap around your bowstring and stuff like that, which I got used to, so I just unwrap it a bunch, but it's not as fun. So this stuff is quite expensive, five bucks for a meter, like three feet, so I cut a foot usually off. I'm mounting my, my clickers quite high on my limbs. Um, lovely knife, by the way. I love this knife. Um, used it all over Northern Ontario for a bunch of tasks. Um, Safari Mini Hunter by Castrim. Amazing value. Um, okay, sorry. 
I'm just a gear junkie. And blah, 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 where was I? Um, a foot is usually enough for me to go through the blade and then do like an over, like a roll over or loop around my, my bowstring so it can swivel freely while the bowstring is doing whatever it has to do after release plus whenever I go up or down um, on my brace side which might happen with different arrows and stuff like that so I need something where the bowstring can um, turn freely inside I used to just put it through the string and then melt it over on the back but um, it starts like twisting around and all kind of stuff and I really don't like it I like the adjustability as well as I said in my other video fine adjusting um, your clicker if you do not have the little chain anymore or any other way by just um, going with the two knock points that keep this in place up and down the string a little bit that's my fine adjustment and the knots are strong enough and tight enough that they don't move by themselves okay so I just need a foot I'm mounting them very high up on my um, on my bow limb so there's not a lot of distance needed between um, the limb and the string at full draw that was a long long winded way of saying that okay so what we need to do now in order to keep this in place is two things first of all um, we're going through the clicker blade here you can blacken this before or afterwards um, I usually as you saw in the other video I'm just using some sharpie to make this whole thing black on both sides so it's at least blending in a little bit better um, then I'm, I'm going through this um, D-loop material here let's just burn it a little bit on one side so it doesn't really take too much damage while I'm going through here there's some sharp edges but that's the DIY factor okay so we're through now I'm going ahead just a little bit maybe like an inch or so a couple centimeters now I'm gonna take my lighter or whatever you have this like little table torch here sorry for that and I'm burning it pretty thoroughly really started me melting it and then I'm using the side of this thing to create quite a substantial mushroom I just want to make sure that I do not accidentally ever pull this through all right that should be enough I hope you can tell what this looks like um, I'm leaving this as is now the next problem I have before um, or basically the last part of this video before all the rest is like in the other clicker video is that I need to reinforce this upper part here of the D-loop material because otherwise it's gonna get damaged by this sharp metal parts down here um, it's pretty easy to do that basically what you're doing is you take some very liquid super glue not the jelly stuff but the very liquid stuff that's able to penetrate into the material and what you're doing is you're just soaking the first eighth of an inch or something like that the first couple of millimeters maybe a quarter of an inch you're just soaking it in this highly liquid super glue that's hardening rock hard it does two things first of all it's reinforcing your little mushroom up there and second of all it just really hardens the D-loop material in those first couple of millimeters so I just set aside this thing here you of course can just do this without the clicker blade on but I just wanted to show you what it's supposed to do or what it's meant to do I'm just setting this aside to dry because I've prepared another piece over here ready um, that has this material on and um, it dried within like 10 minutes or so to absolutely rock hard and as you can see as well if I'm trying to bend this it doesn't bend in the first five four five millimeters there at all it's completely rock solid so yeah, basically turned this into the metal protection ferrule that was supposed to be on there with the clicker when you buy it so even if you lose that piece on your clicker whatever 
um, this is a good way to reinforce this. I saw Joel Turner doing this um, a little bit differently. He said he's using epoxy. So all of these things I'm showing you here, a little bit of a, co um, a combination of a couple of different tips I got online, of course, from Aaron Snyder on Kefarocast, um, from Joel Turner on his own Shot IQ um, channel. And of course, I always need to make a shout out or want to make a shout out to the Push Archery who saved archery as a whole for me and like now I, I'm shooting every single day and it's just been such a great journey um, and yeah the one the one passion or hobby that I didn't make into profession so I really try to keep it as that and having a great time so thanks folks um, this is a little bit of a different video from a funny angle um, but not really supposed to um, be super romantic but just an update on the clicker video so um, Thank you very much. Subscribe to the channel, please. Leaving likes, that's the only way how YouTube knows that, that you like the stuff that's going on. Um, check out the axe videos. All the spoon carving stuff is, of course, what usually runs on this channel. Little Wayfarer axes, journeyman axes. Um, always need to make a little plug here for a second. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys are safe. I'm going to see you next time. Good cheers.